We, we see them as something different. And we don't see them as a woman and all that comes with being a woman. So growing up, let me say something. Growing up, I never saw a rotation of men in and out of the house. That didn't happen. There was only one guy in the house. Mr. William Payne, Mr. Willie Payne, the concrete man, the construction man. Now, while looking back on that man, now as, as a man myself, a few things stood out. One, he did a hell of a job that he did not have to do. And it was not his job to do it. And he did it without thanks, respect, or appreciation. While I really liked this man, I treated him very poorly as a young man and well into my teenage years. I absolutely tortured this man. I disrespected him every chance I got. I did it not because I didn't like the man. It's not like I did not like him. I did like him. I did it because I knew there was nothing he can do about it. My grandmother, to her, one of the failures that I would have to admit, and I think to a degree she would admit this too, is that in front of me and the other kids in the house, which included her son, she, my grandmother has a son, we're about a, we're about a year apart. In the house, she would state over and over again that he was not allowed to discipline anyone in the house. She would say this in his face in front of us. She would constantly threaten to put him out if he made any attempt to correct our behavior the way a man should correct, a, correct, correct out of control boys' behaviors. So whenever she left the house, it was like the boxing ring went off, like ding, ding, ding. It was on and popping. We were at that dude. We did everything we could to provoke this man. Not because we disliked him, not because he was mean to us, or not that we were even like terrible children. It's because we knew, you know, we could get away with it. It was fun to us. It was a game. We're kids. We're stupid. It was a game. The behavior that this very good man had to tolerate should have never been allowed to happen. But because he lived in my grandmother's house and we weren't his grandchildren or his children, we could mistreat this man as we saw fit because we had our marching orders from my grandmother. This man provided a mostly comfortable living in the house. I know that now. We know that then. He always, he was always kind, except, you know, when we were torturing him, then, you know, he was screaming at us, but all he could do was scream. There wasn't nothing else he could do, <laughs> you know? And this was a big dude. Like, he, 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 he was like a construction worker, concrete layer. The man was built like concrete. If, you, if he touched you, it felt like he was killing you, and all he was doing was putting his hand on you. He was, he was a, yeah, if, if, if he actually, like, whooped one of us, my God, I, I don't think we would be here right now. <laughs> you know, he was he was he was that 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 much of a towering presence. But when you got kids who can disrespect him and he can't and his mind can't do anything about it. I mean, you know, it was a free for all. Through all of that. He was extremely protective of us. He would give us his last. But because my grandmother had no issue with letting the kids and him know he had no real influence in the home, we learned that a man's authority is only as strong as a woman allows. And by the way, my grandmother barely knew that we did this to this man because he never told on us. A man's authority in my eyes was only as strong as a woman allowed because that's all I was. That's all I saw. With the majority of black men in this country, uh, with, the, with the majority of black men in this country that want a black woman, black men, I'm sorry to tell you guys, I hate to break the bad news to you, but you will be stepfathers. And uh, many of them will be, um, and many, many of us will be in positions like he was in the home. 
But by the time I understood what 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 a remarkable thing this man did, I was in my late twenties. I remember tracking down his number, and I wanted to call him and thank him for the job that he did, and and, and tell him sorry for the hell we put him through. And instead of calling right away, I kept putting it off and I kept putting it off because of very, I, I don't know why I kept putting up, but I just did. You know how it is. I intend to, I'm going to, I'm fixing to do all of that stuff. And then about eight months after I got his number, I got a call from my grandmother letting me know that he passed away because he had moved to, he had moved to another state. So this man left the world not knowing that in his prime, he did a remarkable job and was a remarkable man, even with all of his failures. And he never got to hear from anybody in that house. Thank you. The burdens of a black man. Productive character-driven black men will, will often carry burdens of a thankless job. Many of these black men will go through life never having the people that they impacted acknowledge them. This is not a complaint. It's just an identification of a burden that many black men carry and will carry. So with me watching the most influential woman in my life treat this man this way, the way she did, the message she sent us growing up about who we should respect was, I developed an unconscious, dismissive, and combative way of interacting with any man. This manifested itself in many ways throughout my life. Before I met my father, my grandfather, there were two men that came into my life at different points, and they made a, a big, a, a great attempt to try to correct some of his behavior issues. They tried. Both of these men I actually worked for, they were both supervisors of mine, two black men. They tried to teach me and have an impact on me as an adult. But my imprinting was just that strong. I would go and complain about what I was going on at work. And then I would hear the same thing. You don't let no monkey get in your face like that. I don't care if he pay you or not. Yeah. So I just would reinforce that bad habit at work. I fought these men at every turn. Anytime I thought they were showing me any kind of disrespect, man, the fight was on because I wasn't going to let no monkey talk crazy to me. <laughs> to the credit of these two men, which I will, to the credit of these two men, they never gave up on me. One of the men that became my supervisor in my professional life should have been, um, should have fired me about eight or nine times. He never did. Never got a raise, <laughs> but he never fired me. He just kept me. He just kept me and he kept working with me. These two brothers showed such a high level of grace that I did not deserve. It's not their job to do that. But the burdens of a black man. Potential. They had the attitude, I'd be damned if I don't do everything I can to not make sure that this potential don't go off the rails. <laughs> 